24 hours behind schedule, after a minor plumbing problem prompted a stopover in Lymington, we set off for the 600 mile trip to northern Spain. Beating past the Needles Lighthouse and out of the Solent, into a southwesterly 20 knot breeze, the conditions were normal for the time of year, but not ideal for us heading into it to get to Ushant in Brittany. The course was due to be southwest across the channel to Ushant, past the islands and out into the Bay of Biscay on the edge of the Atlantic and down to La Coruña. Uh, we've been on the winds all the way, um, but quite on its ear, so we're looking to try and get round Ushant in one hit. I've cooked, uh, we've, got some, we've got some rice here, uh, some diced chicken with, uh, with one of those uh, Wagamama sauces. It's um, fragrant coconut, ginger and lemongrass stir fry sauce. We're just coming down the, the west coast of Guernsey, I suppose. Uh, we're doing about 235 degrees magnetic, uh, 30 degrees off the true wind. Uh, and we're hoping that the wind continues to sort of come round this way uh, so we don't have to tack before Ushant. Monday dawned fair, but one of the crew was ill, so we detoured for an overnight stop in Labovrac to drop him off so he could get to Brest Airport. The next day, we left with the evening tide, going back, this time in daylight, past all the marts that make the approach channel so interesting including the very tall lighthouse of Ile Vierge. Once underway, the by now customary evening G&T. There's some tonic in it. It's jolly good. We continued westwards towards our turning point at the island of Ushant and then on into the Bay of Biscay. Uh, we, we've had some drama, John. We, we caught a large gust. Uh, or something, and we, we ripped the staysail along the foot and the sheet parted in the knot of the clue. So that was sort of flapping all over the place. And we had to take that down, uh, get it packed away. And now we're, now we're going with the storm jib, which is frankly so small that you could hardly blow your nose on it. Meanwhile, the skipper Stephen was enjoying a nap in his favorite pilot berth. And by three o'clock that afternoon, Jane and Stephen were able to enjoy some sunshine Biscay sailing. So we've had um, we've had rather confused seas, I suppose, uh, for the last for the last half hour, much larger than these. Uh, and we had a check on the chart, and we reckoned that the cause was uh, that we were passing over the edge of the continental shelf, which runs parallel to the coast of France. Uh, and it's there that the, the depth goes from about 200 metres to 2,000 metres. So uh, the water comes in over the Atlantic and it gets thrown up when it hits the shelf, which accounts for why it was a bit, a bit bouncy. Uh, but now we're, now we're out uh, past the shelf. It's, it's really flattened off quite a lot. So we have, I think, about 100 and 35 miles to run to La Coruña. Butch has been very kind and he's uh, pre-sliced the neck fillet into uh, hopefully bite-sized pieces, quite chunky bites it has to be said, and he vacuum packed it for me which is why having bought it at the butcher's last Friday uh, we're still able to enjoy nice fresh lamb. And hidden away Rosemary. I've just put a bit of plain flour in just to try and thicken the sauce and I'm going to put some red fruit jelly and I've um, sought permission from the skipper to have a little bit of this red wine for the sauce. shorts and t-shirts uh, finale to the trip but uh, here am I in uh, thermals, mid layers, oilies, everything I possessed, keeping warm, even got my buff.
But despite Jane's pessimism, the shorts did come out as your motor sailed along the coast to La Coruña, and the trusty iPad came out as well to guide us in. Cheers!